Have you ever wondered whether you might be missed if you are to just not show up where people are accustomed to seeing you? Will your family miss you if they woke up one day and they found you, for lack of a better example, dead? Would your colleagues at the workplace miss you if for some reason you just didn't show up to work and would they even be concerned to call and ask where you are? This is a scenario that describes one of the examples that we're going to look at. Once you've developed <coughs> confidence, once people have developed confidence in you, there are two sides to confidence. Advanced Learner's Dictionary, that is the Oxford version, the International Student's version, this defines confidence in this manner. The feeling that you can trust, believe in, and be sure about the abilities or good qualities of somebody. That feeling that you can trust in the abilities of somebody, that is the confidence. This week we are looking at Jesus won their confidence. <coughs> We want to look at exactly what this confidence means and what it entails. Welcome to this week's show. My name is Phil Batagano. We are looking at exactly what did Jesus Christ use in winning people's confidence before bidding them to follow him. The show is A Moment at Jesus' Feet, brought to you by Hope Channel Kenya, the program that brings light right into your family. With me in studio, we have Sister Becky Arunga. Becky, please, do the needful. The Lord is good. All the time, time, all the time. Thank you very much. We also have Engineer Perry. Engineer. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you very much. And we also have Sister Seraphine. Seraphine. Praise God, viewer. Amen, amen and amen and amen. Last week we looked at Jesus Christ ministered to their needs. What were some of these needs? We saw them. And of course we also realized that sometimes interruptions in our normal daily routines and lives could present us with some of the best opportunities for ministry. Just how many times have we been interrupted? We are going to look at that and many more <coughs> examples as we unearth <coughs> just exactly what is the value of confidence in somebody. Before we begin, kindly, engineer, lead us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you this, mo this point in time to say thank you for your love to us. As we start this session, we pray for the Holy Spirit to come and minister to us. May honor and glory be to you in everything we do, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Welcome back, our viewers. We are looking at Jesus Christ won their confidence. If you have your lesson study with you, the overarching theme is the role of the church in the community. We are on lesson 10. Jesus Christ won their confidence. Sister Becky. As usually, we want to start with you. I, I know you probably have another definition of this word confidence, or, or, or in what context do we see this word con uh, confidence? Maybe you may want to join it also with the key text that we have for this week. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Phil. Uh, the word confidence, I'm more interested in the fide part in the confidence. Now, mm. from my very, from my limited knowledge of law, there is fide always means faith. Mm -hmm. When you have mala fide, you have bad faith. When you have bona fide, you have good faith. Wait, so, wait. yes. Bona, bona fide, is it anything close to bona fide? Uh, uh, not exactly. Uh -huh. Bona fide is good faith. When okay. you have good faith, and mala fide is bad faith. Mm -hmm. So, confidence connotes that there is faith in something, trust, ability to take entirely something or someone because of something that they have or something they have done unto you. There are some words you mentioned that trust, trust faith, faith uh -huh. belief. belief. I may use the example of an advocate-client relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean the life of an advocate has many ups and downs <coughs> but for an advocate to represent their client zealously the client after the advocate has won their confidence, they're able to pour out their heart. They're able to tell the exact things that went transpired so they can get the legal advice they require. So in essence, you're saying yeah. there's an aspect of trust. I trust you. Yes. This trust will uh, will elicit uh, some, some, some sort of belief. Will yes. want will make you believe me. Yes. And then once that belief comes in, there's an aspect of no faith. Now you have faith in me. Yeah. This and thing you that we hear people saying that I have faith in you. So much, so and so. And you can take my word for it. You oh, can yes. you can partner with me. You can follow my principle because you have faith that I'm 
I am someone who desires your good. I'm someone who who can <coughs> keep who can keep secrets. I'm someone who you can trust even when you are on the verge of losing it all. Wow. So okay. that is what that is the that is what Christ aroused in people. So they felt like he is someone they could trust with their life, with their time, with their talent, with everything they It had. sounds like that is such a high calling. Do you think we as Christians can get to that level where we have that kind of confidence? I, I am very glad you use the word Christians just to show that it is because of someone called Christ that you're a Christian. It True. therefore means that when that person Christ is in you, you can do all things through him. For apart from him, the name ceases to exist. Thank you. Connected to our key text. What our is our key text today? <laughs> Thank you. Our key text is from Luke chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. It says, However, <coughs> uh, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. I repeat, I'm reading from the New King James Version Bible. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Um, looking at the context of this scripture, we realize that this is the time that Jesus Christ had cleansed a leper. Yeah. <coughs> and what happens is that the leper came and said, Lord, if you are willing, I love his use of the word, if you're willing. He made it so conditional to Jesus that you must have, be, you must have done all those things I hear people say, but I'm coming to you conditionally. If you, you are, are willing, willing, you can make me clean. And to his request, Jesus was quick to say, I am willing, be cleansed. And that, is, that word is being said after an action, Christ actually acts first by touching him, and then Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. Then immediately the leprosy left him. But then interestingly, Jesus tells him, but go and show yourself the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. But he told him not to tell anyone. But interestingly, what happens is, the report now goes. And everyone learns about Jesus, and now great multitudes follow him. Something I love about this verse, is that? It, it tells us about how to gain the confidence and how to deal with the confidence. You know, Jesus Once it is has won the confidence by, of this man by the act of healing. But Jesus is dealing with this confidence. Verse 16 says, now that people are following him massively, verse 16 says, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. He's hiding. He, that he goes to pray. Mm -hmm. The fact that he has ministered to people, they're not following him, but he has to pray and direct them to the Father. That is something that confidence in Christ and ministry helps us to attain. It gets, it, it makes you come out of that. Well, engineer, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Sister Becky. Um, um, uh, at least that gives us a very nice background of this, of this word, confidence. Engineer, I'd like you to just hit it uh, fr fr from where Sister Becky has left it. And, and, and maybe let me read this text. This is Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. This was Abraham. After he, he had been given this promise, he believed in him and it was counted for him. For what? For righteousness. There was, that, the, 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 there was that faith that Abraham had that granted him that righteousness of God himself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, co connecting that to our theme for this, I, I, I know you may want to add something onto this confidence that we're talking about. Uh, and, um, how, what does it take to win someone's confidence? Uh, thank you. I think uh, the Bible gives us that definition of faith Yes. in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Therefore, oh, sorry, 11. <coughs> verse chapter 11, Yes. It, it gives it that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Of course, many a times in our case, uh, as Sister Becky has put it, it was coming because of something they'd seen some element of what this how this person is behaving or what he does mm -hmm. and then this one arouses some curiosity in their hearts and mind that this is somebody whom you can entrust with your life that is faith 
to trust somebody you can entrust your life on now in the book of um, of genesis the the account you read from the book of genesis chapter 15 that is the account of of uh, uh, abraham, abraham in god you find that it, it is counted to him as faith because he did not know even the direction he was going to but he just trusted that the person who has called uh, or has called me must be knowing look in the book of genesis chapter 22 he is told go and sacrifice your son and isaac asks him fire would we have fire we have but where is the lamb and he says the lord will provide which means he, and the bible says he had calculated that god is able even to resurrect another uh, a point i want to bring is that there is an element of consistency mm. which has to earn this trust in you, uh, in you or people win people to you you know why some politicians are highly rated it is because they are constant they are, there is some consistency they have a track record they have a track record they are not uh, wishy-washy they are not flip flopping today they are here going by circumstance which means they do not have backbone there is in winning confidence there must be element of consistency a story is told of a, a family which they lost a child and it was thought maybe a wild dog had eaten the child but later the story turned that maybe it is the mother who had killed the boy but then and the mother was convicted later somebody who was not even a member of the church who had known the life patterns of this group of the church members said no took this matter back to court and after review it was found that the mother was innocent just because of the reputation of consistency in the lives of these people which they had known one point i wanted to say is that for us to win confidence and trust there must be consistency in how we behave in the things we do that is why joseph was able mm. to be entrusted to be in charge of the household of potiphar that mm -hmm. is why daniel was able to be put in charge of the kingdom of babylon thank you very much sister seraphine <coughs> have our last have a, have a last uh, uh, the, the last saying this even as we draw night towards second uh taking our first break mm -hmm. once you win someone's confidence mm -hmm. then what once you win someone's confidence it is very important that you point them to christ and why is that very important because we are sinners the moment you win somebody's confidence and you don't point them to christ they will now start going into the nitty gritties mm. of your life <coughs> And if you're not very careful, okay, not if you're not very careful, more often than not, they will realize weaknesses which actually they did not expect to see in your life. And the next thing is that they may end up losing that confidence that they had in you. Wow. Very, very profound. Our viewers, you're coming right back to dissect that very, 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 very deeper. On that same confidence note, we're taking a short break, but we'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back, our viewers, to the program A Moment at Jesus' Feet, the program that brings light right into your family. We are trying to look at exactly what it entails to win someone's confidence. Once you win someone's confidence, what do you do? And what is that value? What is the value of that confidence once you have it and once you point it to Jesus? What is the end game in all this? In case you've just joined us, we are looking at Jesus won their confidence. This is lesson 10. The overarching theme for our lesson study is the role of the church in the community. We have looked at many other aspects. In the Christ's method alone, we started by Jesus Christ mingling with people as someone who desired their good. After mingling with them, he showed them sympathy. After showing sympathy, he ministered to their needs. And after ministry to, they, uh, to, the, to, the, to the respective, to the various needs, he is now winning confidence. And of course, after winning someone's confidence, he bade them to follow 
to follow him. So we are at this <coughs> very juncture of winning someone's confidence. This is a seraphine. Yes. Before we took our short break, you were explaining something to us on exactly what it entails. But let me add something little. Mm -hmm. Engineer told us very well that for you to build someone's confidence, there has to be some element of consistency. You, you don't just wake up one day and someone has confidence in you. No, no, no. It has to start slowly. It's something that builds. And there has to be a particular set of standards that have to be kept also. By the way, it, it, standards have to be, to be maintained. Uh, that is an ele a key element of, of, of consistency. It's not like today I'm at 50%, then tomorrow I'm at 60%. In fact, I will only raise more questions than what? Than, than, answers. Than, than answers. So when you, in that step-by-step uh, step step process of gaining someone's confidence, in fact, I should even be improving on my score, or, uh, or so to say. So Sister Seraphine, You've brought in another very important element that once you win someone's confidence, that confidence is not in you. Let me read mm -hmm. a phrase here that uh, it is positive when this confidence is, is attributed to God. Mm -hmm. When it is attributed to God, that is when it becomes positive because there is the aspect of winning someone's confidence and having confidence in yourself. Do you get the difference? Yes. If I have confidence in myself and I'm just this wavering person, I'm bound to make mistakes. And this person will be like, no, no, no. I thought I trusted you with my life. What have you done with it? But if you, this confidence is attributed to God, there is something that, uh, that happens. That is what you are trying to explain. C could you kindly expand a little further? Yes, when, when the confidence is actually based in Christ, mm -hmm. the source of, con of the confidence really matters. Because I believe Christ should actually be the source of our faith. If it, it, if it should acquire the consistency, it ought to, to have the continuity and the reliability mm. for it actually to be concrete faith. And similarly, because we ought to be like him for us to actually have that true faith, we can only be like him by borrowing from him entirely. For, uh, for people to have confident, confidence in us with regards to, to, to our faith and, and uh, any other thing, we actually ought to do what Christ did, sympathize with them, mingle with them as one who desired their good, and also minister to their need. Yeah. Thank you very much. Something interesting is for someone, they, they say that for you to be, uh, <coughs> If, 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 if someone is to love you, you must be what? You must be lovable. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone to show confidence in you, engineer, mm -hmm. how, do you how do you define that? <laughs> <laughs> but should you be approachable? I don't know how exactly what word to use. But of can course, we elaborate a little further? Of course, that? there must be some reciprocation. Mm -hmm. You must be open to, to reach to the people. If you are isolated as an island, it may be very hard to... to to even develop that. You see, mm -hmm. you had said Jesus method alone. Mm -hmm. He mingled with them. After mingling with them, he showed them sympathy. He showed sympathy to them and then uh, ministered minister to, to their, their needs. needs and then won their confidence. Mm -hmm. Look at those steps. Of course, there is no time frame which has been put mm -hmm. that mingling with them will take one week. Mm -hmm. uh, then maybe uh, showing sympathy two days. Mm -hmm. There is no time frame, but it depends on from time to time on how you you relate with somebody. The people you can relate with within one hour, mm -hmm. but you just seen there are people whom it is easy to get along with, or you can touch somebody's life even within a short span of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it is not something which you have to put a time frame on it. Mm -hmm. But the point is, we must spend, we must invest time and deliberate time and resources in that. Sister Becky? Yes? There's a careful balance that has to be struck between these two aspects. What is this? Thank you very much, Brother Phil. When we're talking of confidence, there is a temptation to win confidence by concealing. Ah. Yes. By, by, by not telling the truth, the straight testimony as it is. Thinking that if I win confidence, I have to sugarcoat or conceal those things that I perceive to be wrong, or p conceal those things that I think are not good in my case. Just look at a little short, to interject a little. Yes. I've, seen, I've seen some preachers who preach uh, this particular kind of message uh, that will endear them to the people, mm -hmm. that endears yeah. them to the people, <coughs> forsaking the message that they're supposed to preach to these people. Why? Because they don't want to create enmity. 
How is that? Is, is that maybe what you're alluding to? Uh, exactly. That's what I'm alluding to in the sense that we said confidence is con fide, mm -hmm. with faith. So when someone has faith in you, they, that faith should stand the test of time, the test of storms, and the test of aces. Whether I'm telling you, telling you, times, whether yes. I'm telling you something that is going to hurt you yeah. or that is going to, you know, it has to be. It has to be still. So it therefore means that the careful balance we're talking about here, you should not be too much concerned in winning someone's confidence as to forget that there is warning and rebuke and reproof that needs to take place so that the confidence is won from a point of information. Uh, we, we realize that, that okay, w what we learn daily by basic law is for someone to give you consent, they must have prior informed written consent wow. in the sense that the person you, you you seek the person is given consent before the fact mm -hmm. and down. the consent is informed you've told them the repercussion of their action good or bad and it is written down so that it can be used as evidence in future so the striking of a balance is just allow us to look at an example here first Please. corinthians chapter three <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 3. We find there is a ministry of Paul to the church in Corinth. Yes. But Paul, in writing this letter, is not just out to make the people of Corinth happy about their situation. <laughs> He's saying to tell them that because they had been having internal wrangles regarding who they belonged to. Just verse 5 says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but, go, but God who gives the Very increase. Good. If you were to work in a particular church as a guest mm -hmm. on this material day, what would run in your mind? Be thinking these people are very chaotic. If this is what they preach in their church, then I, I, I am no longer coming here. But confidence requires you do not conceal any information. Consistency in fidelity to the truth attains confidence. Whether it is that the balance has to be with the information, it is consistency to fidelity to the truth. Amen and amen. Engineer, yes, uh, you want to interject I on something? I want to add that even when you look at the Bible, yes. first of all, we have the confidence in the Bible because you find the Bible it is written naked as it is. They have not tried to conceal or to hide some facts about some people. Look at the case of David. The Bible puts it bare naked as it is. Then what a God do we serve? Who tells you everything as it is? Mm. If it was confidence, first of all to me the Bible wins my confidence because it tells you confidence is not only being won by only the positive, it is also getting the facts as it is, so that even if you're making the judgment, you make it from informed position. position. I want to add something on striking a balance. You're first, yes. In that, like Sister Seraphine had said, that you realize that in all this confidence, it has to be geared vertically on the y-axis. When we have drawn people horizontally from the y-axis, mm. then it has to be directed through y-axis. <laughs> the reason is, Matthew 5, 14, 16 says, Let your light so shine before others, so that they may see yeah. the good works in you, and give glory to your Father in, in heaven. heaven. So, as the Lord bestows, good things in good, us uh -huh. which can draw people or develop confidence in us from other people as we draw them through x and z axis <laughs> we direct them through amen. y axis and amen, and amen. thank you very much Nina, for that very very profound example which is very practical let me read just something here before i bring in sister seraphine that but the, 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 on this same same balance, Sister Becky, you you carefully pointed to us the fact that some people win confidence through malicious mm -hmm. uh, means, and, and 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 of course we have to ensure that the confidence that we win here is based <coughs> on on truth, go, on, on truth uh, pointing to Jesus, pointing to God Himself. At the same time, as we are, are encouraging people to have this godly confidence, 
person, uh, we ourselves, we are not perfect. And that is why it would be very, very important for us to have Christ at the what? At the very center. Uh, indeed, there's no question that many of the quarrels and struggles within a church would quickly dissipate when the members focused solely on, minist on ministering to the needs of the community. Some other aspect here that I see here is uh, when we are united in focus towards ministering to, pe ministering to people's needs, even the struggles and the wrangles that sometimes we face in our churches, in our congregations, in our meetings, as a people of God, as Christians, would dissipate. They would simply do what? Scatter. Why? Because I'll realize that, oh, engineer is trying to buy maybe 10 bills of, uh, of unga to take to where? To this particular uh, home for the needy. Uh, Sister Seraphine is doing this. Uh, Sister Becky is also doing this. And we'll realize, oh, let me find a way of supplementing or complementing what uh, engineer maybe has done what has tried and by so doing we will find ourselves doing what even breaking down some some walls and some barriers thereby learning to trust each other and win each other's what confidence, confidence. as we try to it is important to note even to our viewers that as we try to win people's confidence to point them to jesus we also need to win confidence among us, too, mm -hmm. among us ourselves, among us each other, mm -hmm. isn't it? Sister Seraphine, yes. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, a very nice verse that I love mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. A good name is more desirable than great riches. Mm -hmm. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Mm -hmm. Wow. You want to break, down, br break that down for us? Exactly. Please. A good name is not given. It can only be given at birth. Why are you sounding like a politician? <laughs> that power is not given, power is taken. Okay. <laughs> because that is the fact. A good name is earned. Friend, a good name is earned. And that is why, for you to get, by the way, a name is not what we get at birth. Mm. A name is what we build over time. Actually, with time as we grow, you realize your mother may have give, called you Philbert. Mm -hmm. But with time, as you continue living in this earth, what I kuona, you'll hear people say, mm -hmm. sorry to say, you'll hear people say uh, that, you know that foolish one, or that selfish one, or that humble one? Oh, man. All of a sudden, other names have started coming. Well, and actually, that is who you are. And um, social capital, so to speak. Mm -hmm. When you talk about social capital, what do you mean? It is actually what you invest in people many people go investing in banks in places so that in in, in due time they'll get what proceeds, proceeds and but returns. in this world exactly but it's only for selfish gain which kind of investment can only give you positive return even in this world even in um social relationships it's actually investing in people and that is what we, what we call social capital you only get it when you invest in people through sympathetic deeds sympathetic actions reaching out to them as a people meeting their needs that is the way to actually truly invest in the kingdom of god social capital wow wow well on that same social capital note, let us take a very <laughs> short break. We will be right back to look at this social capital. What, it, what is it and what is the value of this? And remember, we are looking at Jesus Christ winning people's confidence. We have so far tried to bring up the aspect of this confidence. What is it? What is the Bible's definition? What is the dictionary's definition? What, is, what does it mean to you as a Christian and me as a Christian? We will be right back. Please don't go away. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. It's a verse that we read initially. We Let's re re uh, read it one more time. That a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. We know just the value that the world attaches to these precious metals, silver and gold. Welcome back to the last segment of the program, Women at Jesus' Feet, a program that brings light right into your family. We want to look at this animal of sorts called social capital. Sister Seraphine. You were telling us something about social capital. Could you kindly sure. finish your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
social capital essentially really means reaching out to people around you with a view of establishing relationships. But you know, I cannot enter into any meaningful relationship with you until I have learned to trust you. Mm. And the only way I can trust you is by you essentially meeting some of my needs. They may not be material, they may be uh, spiritual, they may be mental, you know, whichever kind of need, you have to meet a particular need of mine for me to trust you. And to be honest, most Christians, I don't know who told us that, uh, as Christians, we have a leeway to be mediocre so long as we profess the name of Jesus Christ. No way. Actually, somebody, a good friend of mine, has her status update as this. You are not a good shoemaker by drawing crosses on your shoes. No, no, no. You are a good shoemaker by doing just that. Making good quality shoes. shoes. And you know, in the word of God, we have examples of this kind of faith. Living faith. Excellence. The likes of Daniel. The likes of Joseph. Joseph people who are trusted in their times. Mm. And they were not trusted by their very own. Joseph was in a land of bondage. Today, feel bad. If you are taken to a Shimolatawa equivalent prison in Fiji, and I <laughs> will you somehow rise up to <laughs> prominence? <laughs> and the next time engineer visits Fiji, <laughs> you're the one you know, welcoming him from there. That's a very extreme example, but it's okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Just asking. And you know, we, we only can view it that way to see how significant uh, his efforts to stoop, I mean, not to stoop too low, but to take any pains to establish relationships, took him to win confidence, even not of the prisoners, mm. but of the monarch. And not only him, even da uh, Daniel, together with his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, from people in bondage, slaves, surely. To, you know, we, sh we have very elaborate platforms, by the way. Even just as a form four lever or, you know, as a graduate, jobless, I think we already have a platform. These people did not have a plus platform at all. It was not their country. They had all the reasons to say they cannot be trusted. That's true. But imagine they rise above all that and they win the confidence of people. Why? It was because of their actions that indeed won. Con the, the actions were reliable and consistent besides them being constant. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Very, very profound, very, very deep examples. And speaking of Daniel, Daniel actually went through three successive kings. Mm -hmm. Look at King Nebuchadnezzar. He became the right-hand man of King Nebuchadnezzar. When Darius took over, he was still there. Exactly. Then Cyrus, it, the it Persian. Was, it, it, it was uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Then we had Belshazzar. Belshazzar also. And now uh, Darius. And Cyrus. The mid. And then Cyrus the, the Persian. The yeah. Actually, exactly. it's even four, because these are four <laughs> four successive kings. Yeah. He stood the test of time. How can you imagine even in our very own country? How many leaders do we see moving from government to government in the same or a, a bigger position of trust? <laughs> very rare. And by the way, speaking of speaking any, anyway, engineer, I know you want to uh, you want to add, Let you, me you add something <laughs> that Brother Phil, but you very know fast. when Jesus commanded his disciples not to carry a bag or to carry something when they are going out. The essence here is that he was expecting them after their interaction they would be riding on the social capital. capital. They would be supported, yes. sustained by the people, the friendships they would make. They would make. You've heard of a story, it is much in the WhatsApp, where a girl, they despised their father because their father was, to them, the father was poor. Mm, but oh when yes. the father died, one day she was called for an interview and then from the name, somebody, are you the daughter of so and so? Yes. She did not even do the interview. She was already accorded the job. Because it happens even today. You just from the name, you are so and so. You, are you related to so and so? Are you the son of so and so? Then automatically it is trusted. You must be an upright person because of you. the social capital your father had invested. Because you bear that name. Because of that name. I look at it this way, Brother Philbert. Social capital to me is a gift. It is some of the gifts and talents we must take care of. Individually and corporately as a church, there are some things we can easily achieve because of the good capital 
influence we have created in the community mm -hmm. in a country where we live. Caution, we should not trade or earn it in an orthodox Mass. manner. Just like Sister Baker was mentioning So that we do not dilute the true principles and the truth we have known in Christ. Amen and amen. Sister Becky, yes. they're talking about the value. What is the express value of this social capital? And of course, looking at it from the fact that we as Christians, just that name alone, Christian, engineer has talked about the fact that if you go to some interview, maybe they hear of Arunga. I'm sure some people have, uh, <laughs> let us just mention, some people have uh, attributed you to, to the Esther Arunga, you know, because there's that name. So they, they, they want to, are you related to so-and-so? If somebody hears of Aganyo, uh, there's an elder Ganyo that, that people have asked me, Phil, but are you related to elder Ganyo? You know, um, or Okemwa, Pastor Okemwa. Pastor Okemwa, you know, <laughs> uh, Opere. Uh, I don't know whether there's another Opere, but there's only, uh, that one is a very unique one. But now the fact that there's Christians. Now, can somebody attach that goodwill that Jesus Christ had? Can they relate it to us? Mm -hmm. Can we be trusted by the fact that we bear the name Christians? That, oh, you're a Christian. I know you have the very attributes of Jesus Christ. So I trust that everything is going to be good here. Sister Becky, mm -hmm. tell us something about this value. Um, thank you very much, Brother Phil. I would love to apply the analogy used, my, used by uh, Brother Opere and Sister Seraphine. When you have a particular name, let's say if I am Becky Arunga, someone would hear and say, Becky, are you related to so-and-so? Uh, yes. They may give me... They may treat me differently on account of my relation. Yes. But how much more, Sister Seraphine was saying that the greatest blood relationship we have of all time is the fact that the blood of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. binds us as a family. Amen. So if, if the only relation I ever knew was the fact that I am related to God, that <coughs> I have Jesus in my heart, and that I owe my allegiance to him, how can I make use of that to ensure that the community I live in are actively involved in the work of saving souls, even without them knowing. When we look at the Bible, many of the times that, that we, are, we are lost in our own projects, we are lost in our own activities, thinking that we are doing a favor for God, and thinking that other people are not looking how good we are doing, or rather how much we are struggling to ensure that the cause of God mm -hmm. proceeds. But of one thing we know, that all blessings come from who? From, from God. God. Everything God has done what has created. Even the one in the hand of the heathen belongs to God. Belongs to God, true. And he has a right over it. So what happens when we look at the story of Nehemiah? This cup ne could you maybe just read that text? Yes, yeah. Nehemiah chapter 2. Please read it for us from verse um, 1 to 9. 1 to 9. Yes. The Bible says, New King James Version, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. First point. Two, therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad, since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, How long will your journey be, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Furthermore, I say to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given for me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. And a letter to Esaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I will occupy. 
and the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Amen. Then I went to the governors <coughs> in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Amen. So when we look at this verse, we see a situation where Nehemiah was a cupbearer, but he was just one of a kind. In the sense that the, queen, the king was able to realize when his countenance had fallen. I think oftentimes it is when people relate with you, what do they see? Are they able to note the change in circumstance, rather the change in your situation? Mm. And then Nehemiah said he was afraid, but he prayed unto God. What I love is this one verse 8 says, And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. So there are many things, as we have said, God is the creator. All things belong to him, including the ones in the hand of the heathen. But sometimes we close them out in doing things for God. Mm -hmm. But as we interact and join with God in prayer, mm -hmm. he is able to move their hearts to support the work of saving souls. Very true. It is not time for us to call them up, only politicians, to propel their ideologies. But we have genuine concern of them taking part in the house of God. Remember Jesus said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, you do unto me. Unto Why me. not give them an opportunity to be of service in the house of God? And that value does not, I mean, for, for someone who does not believe in God to join you in ministry, it means that you have won their confidence. You have a reputation of goodwill, of consistency, and of loyalty, so that they are not afraid to invest in you. Yeah. So I think the first thing that we need to do, if the world sees Christ in us, they will not fear to support any cause we have. That's true. In our previous lesson, we had read of the, the pastor who, when he went to a particular station, he did not start by building a church. What he did is that he assessed their needs, then he had a social hall somewhere where he would minister. He didn't have to build the church. The people built the church themselves after realizing its value. So I think, even as Christians, that the Lord has given us an opportunity, we can partner with other people in ministry. Our good deeds are enough to make them so have a way to support our ministry, whether in building schools, building churches, building hospitals, cleaning the street, anything they can take part in because they take cognizance of the fact that we have been with God and the fact that everything belongs to God, even the one in the hand of the heathen. Amen and amen. But can I just ask Please. you a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, in the world of today, mm -hmm. don't you think there are very many intentions cutting across that are coupled with works of goodwill? Mm -hmm. And don't you think we should also, um, not in a manner to just criticize, mm -hmm. but we should also proceed on mm -hmm. and analyze in a case-to-case -case basis mm -hmm. uh, the help that is being accorded to us mm -hmm. Uh, and not uh, just accept or reject automatically. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, mm -hmm. there can be somebody who is coming to give you help when you need it, mm -hmm. but they have an end to it, mm -hmm. which is very destructive. Mm -hmm. In a world of today where we have wicked minds, and really may God help us. They're looking for an opportunity. Think, uh -huh. um, yeah, don't you think we should, um, we should actually look at it very keenly? Uh, Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, before engineer jo gives a join on the same, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I, I would underscore is the fact that when the Christian, <coughs> the duty of the Christian mm -hmm. is to be bathed in prayer with God. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as often as the Lord leads, mm -hmm. where he leads, you shall go. Mm -hmm. Whatever is in the world that mm -hmm. God has created belongs to him, whether it is in the hand of the heathen. Mm -hmm. And if he needs it, he will use you to go get, get it. it. So it is for the Christian <coughs> to guard the avenue that God uses to communicate with him. So that with a clear perspective. You know, Nehemiah was asked, why is your countenance fallen? He didn't make the request until he prayed. Mm -hmm. it, it, so we are not to move emotionally mm -hmm. in the heat of passion. Someone mm -hmm. is donating bales of flour and here, mm -hmm. here we are. Uh -uh. 
God are these bells yours? Are mm -hmm. they for your children? Mm -hmm. Then we proceed. Mm -hmm. But as long as we are now willing, ready, and able to pick everything that comes from someone, mm -hmm. then you may just end up falling in the hands of people who are unscrupulous. But mm -hmm. God leads us in prayer. Mm -hmm. in, 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 thank you very much. Th th that's a very profound uh, explanation. Ingenia, as, you, as you come in, mm -hmm. maybe we can ask, uh, one of the other questions we can ask is, what are some of the ways that we can use to build this social capital. Of course, we know that the, these guys were sent, the disciples were sent to go and do it. Leverage the goodwill. Mm -hmm. so in this era, we talk about networks. Mm -hmm. We're in a networking scenario mm -hmm. where the networks that we build professionally and socially are those that we can leverage to even help us live. Some of us have been able to, to survive. Personally, when I came to Nairobi, Almost 10 years ago, I was <laughs> of course, you know what I'm, what I'm going to say. I had, I don't, I didn't even know this street from that. I had to live with relatives, I had to depend on people. Uh, and uh, after some time, you know, that value that you develop from your networks is what makes you even be able to do it to find people and even friends to live with and to survive. Engineer, you wanted to add something? Thank you. I want to just add on it that. As we ride on the value of that social capital, which is very important to us even as a church and as, well as, a, as a movement, it is good. And I love the way my sisters have put it, that we should not just automatically reject or accept. Mm. Actually, it is the children of God. They are only in custody of God's properties. So God can, is, uh, can push them, act on them to do something but we should move in spirit so that you know some people can bring money to church in order to instead of laundering it through other agencies they can launder it through church thinking that now when they have donated to god now they have sanitized it <laughs> that now we have even paid to god that is why as a church we also must be we not only walk softly within the sanctuary, <laughs> but even without the sanctuary. You remember that is a perfect. Yeah, I, I wanted to. I wanted to. As, as you do that, also tackle this aspect of we having favor with all people. Thank you. How do we get to that? That is very nice. It is important and imperative for a church to have favor with the people, not only its members, but even the neighbors in the communities, governments, where wherever we are. Very true. It is not always this uh, that it will be good, but it is good to have favor. Why? Uh, it is good for every church to ask themselves: If we close doors today, will the community where we live miss us? A good question. That is a question which every church should ask. You know, as we had said before, the first item of church. Uh, church leadership meetings or church boards or business meetings should be evangelism, evangelism. because that is our core mission on earth Very true. to evangelize uh, to pray, to bring to the attention of the world that fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come if that is our mission we should from time to time ask ourselves if we closed doors would we be missed meaning are we living to this mission? If it is so that they will not miss us, then we should shift focus from to move from building walls, from being centering only within the walls mm -hmm. of the church, but of the church mm -hmm. to building bridges with the community and with the areas of the com people we are with or we live uh, with. That does not mean we just engage in any activity for the sake of it, but it must be evangelism driven so that we move as commanded by Jesus Christ, go ye therefore. therefore. Look at the case of, uh, when you look at the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47, the new apostolic church, the early ap apostolic church, they were sharing together they were breaking bread together, they were praying, they were meeting the needs of one another. The point is, we must also build within. We call it in reach. For us to be effective outreach, we must also build within. within. So, in that, it makes the church, it will make you and I, the church, mm -hmm. to be 
to find favor with the people. You know the Bible have seen two people who found favor with people, men and God. Jesus himself in the book of Luke. He grew in stature and found favor with, with God. God and with the man. Mm -hmm. Samson also, Samuel. Uh, Samuel, Samuel, also found favor with God mm -hmm. and with people. They were not just finding it out to blues. It was due to their interaction with the people. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Sister Becky, yes. give us your closing thoughts on this same topic that we've been talking about. Confidence. We've been talking about winning confidence. Jesus Christ did this. How can we as Christians do this? Your closing thoughts. Uh, my closing remark is from the book of Proverbs uh, chapter 17 verse 13. Proverbs 17 verse 13 and verse 15. Just to show us that confidence is with faith, not bad faith, but good faith. Mm -hmm. It says whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. <coughs> Verse 15 says, He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. So tread softly. Truth must be spoken without concealment. Amen and amen. Engineer, give us your closing thoughts to this. We can never win confidence through our own efforts. But we must realize that we have to play our part prayerfully showing sympathy, mingling with the people. Let me start by mingling with the people, mm -hmm. showing sympathy, ministering to their needs. And after winning their confidence, not because it is an obligation for the governments, for NGOs, it is an obligation. But you and I, it is not just an obligation, but it has to come as an attitude of love. Though it is an obligation, it is an obligation driven by love of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sister Seraphine, give us your closing remarks to this. My closing remarks are this. We have stayed here quite for a long period of time. And if we will finish this work, it is not without winning confidence that we will finish this work. And my urge for you, Phil, for you, Becky, for you, engineer, and even for the Christian at large, is this. Let us start, stop building walls and now build bridges sanctified so, so that we can finish the work and Christ will come to call us home. Thank you very much our viewers. This has been quite a profound study and we have looked at very many aspects of winning people's confidence. As we draw this to a close, I'd like you to ask yourself a question. Will you be missed if you were to die today? What legacy are you leaving? Have you lived a life that is reminiscent of Jesus Christ's method alone? Mingling with people as someone who desires their good, sympathizing with them, and of course sympathy has the aspect of doing something. You must be impressed to do something once you sympathize. Have you ministered to people's needs? Have you won their confidence, not by hiding some <coughs> things, but simply living your life as a Christian? These are some of the tough questions that, of course, the last one is, has your life been an embodiment of the faith that Jesus Christ requires of us? Even as we ask ourselves these tough questions, may the Lord be with us all. May the Lord continue impressing upon our hearts that we may be these same examples of Jesus Christ. May we be the Jesus Christ out there, the someone that is well lived. And may the Lord bless us all with that. Till next week, from us, it's goodbye. Engineer, could you kindly give us a closing prayer? Our Father and our God, we come before you once again to say thank you for your answer to our prayers by speaking to us. How we pray, King of Kings, that all these that we've learned, we may put them into practice, that we may mingle with your children, we may show sympathy to them, we may minister to their needs, and we may also win their confidence so that we call them to follow you. By our own strength, there is nothing we can do, but through you, there is nothing which is impossible. Be with each and every one of us, be the viewers, and minister to our needs according to riches in glory. Above all, may honor and glory be to you now and always, for yes, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen.